Hey yo, so uh, what's popular? So I got a um, I got an email from a listener uh, and subscriber asking my opinion uh, or I guess my take on the whole Afghanistan has fallen um, uh, madness going on in in the media right now. And I, I, I don't know madness, maybe mad, I don't know. Um, so I've mentioned in, maybe in a few videos. Anyone who um, who has followed me in uh, the different podcasts and uh, and tour review things I've done in the past and just whatever other little vlogs I've done, um, talk in it where I may have touched on my military past and my defense contractor past. I've done I did like maybe two a little almost about two years in um, in Afghanistan traveling around the country as a defense contractor. Um, my dope missing. Get out of here. Go go traveling around the country as a, as a uh, defense contractor. Um, my position was not such that I spent my time behind the wire. I spent my time outside of the wire, in most cases traveling between um, different uh, uh, fobs and cops and things of that nature um, in support of uh, the military. So uh, ha having said that, I guess it gives me some insight, not only into, obviously was it like it was like in Afghanistan, um, but also what it was like on the ground, um, more so because I actually had dealings with um, some of the villagers and people and um, soldiers definitely um, that were at a lot of these, um, these uh, posts and stuff. And um, it, it was an experience. Um, so how does that apply to what's going on in the media right now and what we see with um, in the um, fallout of uh, U.S. government pulling out of Afghanistan? One, um, finally, about time, woohoo, yeah, <laughs> right? Big whoop, we all know we, we should have been out a long time ago. We've been there for 20 years. I've heard some people refer to the fact that um, that you have kids who went there uh, on deployment who weren't even around for uh, 9-11, right? Um, there, are, there are a lot of different takes on it, um, all of which I think are valid, for, well, most of which I think are valid. Um, I don't know what I can contribute to the conversation of, you know, was it the way we pulled out, was that the right way or the wrong way? Because let's, let's be real, uh, we should not have been there for as long as we were. And no matter what, it was going to come out the way it was. Now, there is a question uh, that I was asked specifically. Um, do, do I think that um, we're really coming out? And I've seen that touched on as well, but more on that here in a second. Let me say this first. Um, because another question that I was asked was, um, would it have been different? And I've seen this question you know, asked to a lot of people. So uh, I guess it's cool uh, to have the ability to um, or have the opportunity to, to, to weigh in on it. But would it have been different if it happened under Trump? <sighs> Who knows? Like, you know, what if the Marvel series is streaming on <laughs> HBO Max, right? Here's what I do know. Um, I'm, hesitant to, I'm hesitant to say yes, only because... While Trump did have the balls to say, hey, get our soldiers out of Afghanistan, we need to be out of in this war early on, while I, I, it's, it's clear that a lot of um, our overseas counterparts, our overseas, um, our, our, our partners abroad versus as well as our enemies abroad, I think it was pretty much a uh, unanimous thought that Trump was crazy, right? <laughs> so you didn't know what he was willing to do or not do, right? So I, I doubt they would have tested him that as much. Um, and, and and when you consider that Trump was trying to have negotiations with the Taliban, uh, and there was this big uproar in the media, I, I, the, I see it as um, intelligence and the the. the um, war machine trying to disrupt the plan or disrupt any opportunity to um to have those peace negotiations um but none, nonetheless uh the fact that trump was trying to have those peace talks with the taliban early on that would lead one to think that you know it might have been under better um conditions right um now having said that my thing is that 
Trump's own generals weren't listening to him. I, I don't I don't see anyone. I never seen anyone talking about it. So I, I haven't seen anyone that's mentioned this. Right. Even when they talk about like January 6th, I bring up January 6th a good bit. Even when they bring when they, when they talk about January 6th and, you know, Trump was trying to overthrow and the, and the put your temp and the um, put your temp is a term used on the, on the show that I I, um, I favored that I watch a good bit. Um, and and um, or, or the insurrection, right? Consider this. I think I brought this point up again, but I'll say it now. I'll say it again. Why not? Consider that Trump is the, was the president of the United States of America. And if he wanted to overthrow or do some kind of coup or something, he had command of the U.S. military. So you would think that you would use that U.S. military, right? <laughs> that wasn't an option for him, right? That, well, to, to that, to the point of January 6th, that shows that, come on, let's be real, there was no real insurrection. But to the point of Afghanistan, or more to the point of Afghanistan, um, his own generals wasn't listening to him. They were giving him false information because they wanted to stay in. The war machine wanted to stay in. The intelligence agencies, they wanted to stay in. So they did not listen to him. Even even in the final draw, the, the final countdown on his administration, um, his time, his, administra his administration's time in power, they were not listening to him. He was like, yo, we're going to get out. He's trying to do something, I guess, so he could have something to put under, a feather to put on, in his cap, you know, so that he could taunt it later. They weren't trying to hear shit he was saying. So what's, what's my ultimate point on that? His military didn't listen to him. His, his generals didn't listen to him. Nobody listened to him. He was not really fully in command. He would make some tweets, right? And then say some shit he wanted to do. And that was pretty much the, the gist of it. I think the only thing they listened to him on was when he wanted to, uh, one, the um, the the tax breaks, the you know, for the for the for the Uber rich, and then two, the the um, the um, immigration stuff, right? The kids in cages stuff. And really, that wasn't even listening because that was already in effect in the first place, right? Because the wall never got built. So, wow, that, that's my... So, let me wrap the... Let me put a bow on that and say, I don't even... I don't think that it could have been done under Trump, even though he spearheaded it because they weren't listening to him. They did not listen to him, right? So, how is that going to get done? And then, even if they did listen to him, come on, man. Like, Trump didn't follow up on things. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I was I would feel like it would it fell apart. So who knows, right? I, I can only give him credit for wanting to do it and trying to do it in the beginning, right? Earlier on, right? That aside, that to the side. Um I see a lot of people talking about and I when I mean in people by saying people I mean like the media, right? I see a lot of journalists um hammering Biden on this whole uh pullout thing and the way it was done. And you wanna give them kudos. People are trying to give them kudos for finally hitting Biden with something, but I I can't give them that because the jerks won, and then two, clearly, clearly there are um, forces at work that still want to have their uh, claws in Afghanistan, or at minimum aren't happy with the fact that we are supposedly coming out, right? So I hate to use the same points that a lot of other journalists are using, but I guess I have to say it. Uh, God, do I have to say? It? I gotta say it. I hate it. I hate using stuff to say stuff to people. Other people are saying they only shit in Biden's lap. Oh, I'm, I'm saying it my own way though. They only shit in Biden's lap because when he's doing something that goes against the war machine, and they only gave credit to Trump when he was doing something that went along with the war machine. You dig? Like they didn't give, and I don't give a fuck about Trump. But I'm just saying. You have to bring these things up, right? Um, and I'm not going to draw it out as to, you know, the comparisons and when and where they shit or did not shat, shit, shat, shat, shit, in Trump's lap or Biden's lap. But the point still remains that they only shit on Biden or or uh, squeeze it up and not shit. This, is, this, this analogy is really getting disgusting. <laughs> or Trump, when it comes to war. You see what I'm saying? So I can't, no, I can't give them credit. And that's what's, that's A. B, this is the largest thing. This is the largest thing. And this is a point that I brought up, um, that I called into um, this, uh, to the backstory on Sputnik, uh, on, on Sputnik Radio, yeah. Um, and asked John Karyaku, who's a pretty awesome guy. Um, Lee, you're, you're awesome too if you're watching this. Yes, you're awesome too. I just, you know. But that aside. Okay, so um, you had the Afghanistan papers. I did a video on the Afghanistan papers, like, a long time ago, right? Go search. You can search if you want to. I don't, I don't know. 
the Afghanistan papers came out, the hugest, biggest thing in the world, especially to anyone that has any care about one empire, two, what's going on in Afghanistan, and three, just our soldiers in general. Because when you're talking about soldiers, right, as a as a prior as as a as prior army, and also um, working in defense, right, contractors might not get the best love nowadays, but still making that money, but still in support of the military, right? Because as a service member, as a prior service member, you know what it's like to be out there, right? So yeah, it's a good deal that you're making a lot of money, but you care about what you do because you know that you are supporting your brothers and sisters, your former brothers. No, they're still your brothers, your brothers and sisters, right? Um, having said that, Afghanistan papers came out um, and as huge a deal as it was, other than a few articles online, the media gave it no air, like none. Like I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm stressing right now in my brain. I'm straining to think of a, a, a segment on any of the mainstream media that went into the Afghanistan papers. And even if they did, they didn't go into the depths of it, right? Because you had generals coming. You had, you had a, it was gobs of information. Please, I'm gonna, I'm gonna link it down below. I'm gonna link it down below before I put this video. I'm gonna make sure I do this. Um, hold me to it. Hold my feet to the fire. Like you had all this information coming out talking about the the fraud, the waste, and the abuse, right? I'm just going to sum it up with those things, right? You had all kinds of information. You had testimony. You had you had literal um, messages from uh, communications from uh, military party to military parties to, to commanding parties, right? To to um, uh, high up government parties saying that. We don't know what we're doing. We're not winning this shit, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There was even as this one, this one line in there um, that sticks out of my mind, where um, this uh, it was a soldier. This, this, I guess this unit that went in first, special special operations or whatever. If, if, uh, forgive me if I'm if I'm um, if I'm ch chopping this up. It's been a while since I, I read through this stuff. But you had you had a, a operator. Let's just say that no matter what the rank is, you had an operator, right? Um, who was uh, uh, communicating back and forth, and they were like, "Well, who are the bad guys? Or you're supposed to go find the bad guys?" And he was like, and he himself was like, "Who are the bad guys? Like who? Like who are the bad guys? You can tell who is who." Now, no one's talking about that, right? Everything is about you know this airfield, this plane leaving, and and, and um, of course these um, Afghanis who who were. Um, who were in support of the U.S. military, you know, being stranded there, left there, falling off the plane. All these are horrible things. Everything is talking about, like, the girls and the women and, and the abuse and, and pain that maybe um, they may be left to, that they may be left to as far as their fates. All that is terrible. All that is terrible. But I don't hear any of these politics, I don't hear any of these uh, political pundits or whatever Referencing other than independence, okay. Let me give, let me give it out to independence, but that's that's not the point. Because let's be real, you know the independents are talking about that, right? Like, even the independents are looking and waiting, waiting for the uh, mainstream media to validate them in some way by covering some of these things that we cover. You know what I'm saying? But they're not. They're not gonna do it. They're not doing it. I, I um. And that's the horrible part. Like they can spend all this time hitting Trump, hitting Trump, 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 Trump or hitting Biden, hitting Biden, 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 and all of this crap. And why? And how could we have done it? How could how could we have done it? If you look back at the Afghanistan papers, it tells you very clearly, very clearly, one that we could not have ever done it at any single point, not at no point. Not only that, they did not know why. They kept changing the messages. They kept changing the the, the mission. I remember being in country with soldiers. This was a constant thing. Somebody tell me why the fuck I'm in this country. I can't tell you how many soldiers I've talked to, laughed with, worked out with, and we, you know we're in the gym, we're laughing about it, and they brought up the same, and they bring, they make up the same point, they bring us up the same point. When the fuck are we getting out of here? What are we doing? I can tell you for a fact. I can tell you for a fucking fact. Majority of the occurrences of the occurrences over there, right? Uh, attacks and stuff like that weren't even necessarily from Taliban. You know what I'm saying? A, a lot of times it was like little villagers and shit and they planted little IEDs. And yeah, some people say, okay, they're insurgencies. Okay, well, what does insurgency cover, right? What does that cover? That's not just Taliban, right? So, and I'm not saying that the Taliban wasn't doing this. I'm not saying that by any measure. What I'm saying is 
you were at war with one, an ideology that makes no sense, right? And then two, you invaded. I'm not, I'm saying you because I'm not the empire, right? You invaded, even as a contractor working at a time, I'm not the empire. You know what I'm saying? You invaded a country. We, we were an invading force, right? In the country. So you would expect that people are going to fight back, right? The people who are tired of shit, don't like the shit, whatever the case is, they fought back in their own ways, right? Not saying, hey, good job for them fighting back. I'm not saying that because obviously our people um, took took uh, took on uh, deaths, damage, pain, you know, all of these things. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, hurrah on that. I'm saying that these many occurrences, these many altercations, these many attacks, if you will, right? were so it was a big mixed bag i mean as i'm trying to explain it now even using even having that statement uh, from the afghani Af afghanistan papers right where he was like well who's the bad guy somebody point me in the right direction because i don't fucking know i can't tell them apart I i'm in the same position right now because you just could not right i mean clearly there was some clearly there were um I had, I had oversight. I, we, we did. I did. We did Overwatch using. I can't. Get, I don't know if I should get into. We did Overwatch um, with these uh, specific systems that I worked on, right? And you can see certain. We we knew where certain training uh, camps were for Taliban, right? I'm going to go with insurgencies because it makes more sense. Because you can't. And insurgencies don't even make sense to say that either. But fine. We knew where certain training camps were. Training camps were. We knew where certain homes were for that were they were housing certain people. And every so often they would go and they would raid these areas, right? But for the most part, you were watching for farmers, motherfucking farmers, or people that was pissed off coming and planting their IEDs and shit like that, and hoping that somebody roll over there and get blown up. And it happened a lot. It happened a lot. So I guess what I'm getting to is that you kept you kept Americans soldiers. Let's deal with soldiers for right now. You kept soldiers in harm's way, right? For what reason? For what reason, right? And let's point that reason out. Anyone, if anyone, anyone talking that fucking country build, that, that country building bullshit, right? That democracy bullshit, that's all bullshit. That's all bullshit, right? I promise you that's bullshit. And I'll spell that out here in a second. Anyone who has been in the country, whether as a soldier or a contractor, right? Intelligence, whatever you want, right? Who is telling the truth, right? Who has some insight can tell you this is all fucking washing the money, money laundering. I'm surprised I've heard no one say that. Like I've heard no, like they touch on, they touch on the corruption, like the corruption with the, the Afghan government and the, the, the corruption with why, or the problem with why wasn't the, the Afghan government, the Afghani army prepared to fight for, like Biden said, they're not prepared to fight for their own country. Bruh, bruh, anyone, anyone, and I definitely have, anyone who had the, uh, <laughs> the let's let's say uh the opportunity to get a moment of levity uh in this ferocious situation right me, me uh, uh, and in that moment of levity that that little moment of entertainment was watching the afghan army or that group at whatever afghan army group at that time train 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 it was ridiculous first of all the the appearance you got these guys who are ragamuff, just just thrown together, it basically just needing a job, or just basically just you know just somebody's cousin's brother brought them in, whatever the case is, so they can get paid because they need they need employment, right? You had guys wearing sneakers with their uniforms, the uniforms were thrown together. In some cases, it wasn't even full uniforms. And don't get me wrong, you had some Afghan army that was getting it. They was getting. I would consider them the special special forces of the Afghan army, right? But for the most part, it was a fucking joke. It was always a joke. It was never intended to be real. I did basic training. I know what training looks like, right? And and I and not special forces. Our the army special forces, that is their job. They go into countries, they train the people to fight. They 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 train they train um rebellion rebellion forces to fight. That's what they do, right? They know how to do it, right? And at some point, uh the US government uh contract this out to contracting companies to do this, right? Here's the difference. Check this out. So you had, uh, I think, I think it was DynCorp. You had DynCorp, 
me give you two instances here. You had Don Corp who ran, uh, and in different in different um, areas, different contracting companies ran security. But for the most part, Don Corp was one of the bigger ones running security. And they had um, these African, they had these African guy, cats come in, and they was for the most part uh, based security and stuff, right? And those guys were pretty well trained. That same contract company could not train the Afghanis. Are the are we supposed to believe the Afghanis had some kind of mental disorder? They couldn't. They couldn't. Uh, they couldn't learn. No, that's bullshit. No, the training was never real. So when Biden comes around and he says that oh these soldiers, uh, oh these people weren't willing to fight for their own country, fight how? Like you didn't train them really. Get the fuck out of here. You might have been told, but you know it was a joke. Anyone. Anyone that had ever even been near a military base uh, out, out in Afghanistan knew it was a fucking joke. Like, anyone. So that's bullshit, right? Next point. Uh, you can look around, and when you go out to the cops, right? These are the smaller, these are the smaller bases uh, out, out, in the, out, out deep, out deep into the uh, enemy territory, I guess you would call it, right? Um, remote places, remote places, remote bases and remote places where they did not have resources. They had generators that are fucking rigged, bullshit, broken down and shit like that. They couldn't get proper support. They couldn't get proper resources, right? But then you go to the main, the main fobs, right? Where, like like the major bases, right? Where, and I've said, I've used this analogy before, you would have like yards and yards and yards of generators, that, that these guys needed out there, but weren't getting to them. And you can't tell me because they couldn't get it to them. Bullshit, right? Bullshit. Just sitting there, not even being used. Equipment yards, just full of equipment being just, just sitting there, right? Somebody's, somebody's paying for that. You're paying for that. We're paying for that. Or better, we're in debt for it, right? We're in debt for it. So I'm saying to say, I'm making that point to make this point. I'm making a point to make a point. And I got to get out of here. Contracting companies... These contracting companies, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin was the one I worked for in the end. Um, Mantech was there, Dine Corp. All, all of these, there's a gang of, there's so many of these companies. Like every everybody, first you had all the major ones, then you got all the small ones, right? These guys were making hand over fist. I'm not talking about the guys just working, like I was just working. Yeah, you make good money, but the contracting, the the, the war machine, the, the companies attached to the war machine, the owners, the the stock, the 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 the, the stockholders, the stakeholders, right? Those guys were making billions of dollars, millions individually, billions overall. We spent uh, we spent trillions in Afghanistan, wasted. We we wasted trillions. No, we we didn't waste. We didn't waste. We funneled trillions in Afghanistan. So the corruption doesn't stop at the Afghan uh, government. You know the the corruption <laughs> it goes full circle because it stops where it started. It starts with our government with the military industrial complex. You dig? That's where the real waste is. So having said that, um, I would just like to see, I would like to see if any of this Afghan Afghanistan paper stuff comes up in the media, right? Because they're just really trying to hit Biden real hard with this shit. Um, I, I'm of two minds on it. Um, when I asked John Karyaku about it, a uh, former CIA agent, he said that he doubts it because you have to go, you have to, um, that was, the, the Afghanistan war was spans four administrations. So that means you got to hit Obama, Obama, Obese, and of course Bush. They, they don't mind hitting Bush kind of, you know, even though Bush is on the men from his, um, you know, public image that we all hate him only because of Trump. We hate Trump so much more, but they're not going to hit Obese. They love Obese, right? This is me talking. This is not John Kerry. So I can see why they wouldn't. But the media is, the mainstream media is very good, very good at using information that should, right, affect uh, the entire empire, but use it to target only specific people who they don't like in that time. So it's possible. I would like to see, I would like to see so, I hope so, because there were a lot of atrocities committed. There was a lot of corruption. A lot of people lost their lives for no reason. Let me just make one more point before I get out of here. I didn't want it to be this long, but it ended up being this long. You talk about the lives that were lost. You talk, they talk about blood and treasure, which I think is bullshit. Don't say blood and treasure. Say what it really is, right? The lives of U.S. soldiers, the lives of uh, in-country uh, participants who helped out, right? Say that, right? 
and then say the money that you guys are, are um, the debt that you guys are throwing on us, the rest of us to pay while you enrich yourself, right? I guess is why they don't say that, right? But I never hear them talk about, I never talk about like soldiers coming to suicide, I talk about soldiers coming back being in a bad way. But I never hear him talk about the families that were destroyed. You, you understand that when a soldier is deployed, his whole family, his or her whole family is deployed, right? And things go on. A lot of things go on, right? That's a serious strain on a, a soldier's family, right? And a lot of families don't survive that shit, right? I mean, being in the military already is kind of it's kind of hard on the family, right? But deployments are extremely hard on families, right? For a lot of different reasons. And those of you who have been in, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking about the distance, right? But um, nobody talks about that. I never hear anybody. It's very rare that you... I, no, I never hear anybody talking about that, right? And then when you talk about people who got yoked in where they were doing multiple, multiple deployments... How did that affect their family? How, how how much destruction did that cause to that family? Would that wife or husband have had the opportunity or desire to cheat or been in the, me or the mental space of feeling desolate to cheat on their deployed spouse? Because it happens. Yes, it happens. You go down range and you come back and your husband or wife then move somebody else in. They call him Jody, right? <laughs> it happens. Would that have happened had that parent that service member not been forced to do multiple deployments in some cases yeah but uh, but in the most part i don't i don't think so i don't think those families would have been as damaged not to mention those service members coming back with with like ptsd coming back with physical damage to their body you know i don't i don't think so so that shit's on not just Biden just because he pulled them out. That shit's on all of those motherfuckers. And to some extent, and this is the final point that I make, this is, it's also on all of us, right? And I will include myself in this, fine. But all of us, because we hold, we don't hold any expectation that the media, of the media doing their job, of our government doing their job. We don't hold any expectation that we've surrendered the idea of what they are supposed to be, Right? And accept it what they are, but still lie to us, lie to ourselves as if they are in some way still going to do what they're supposed to do. No, none of that's bullshit. All that's bullshit, right? So we hold, at the end of the day, we hold a great deal of responsibility because it shouldn't be that if you don't see it on Don Lemon or on Sean Hannity, then it's not a story in your mind. But you know for a fucking fact that all these people are deployed and being redeployed into a war that shouldn't even be going on. You don't have to have read the fucking Afghanistan papers for that. You, you don't have to have had fucking, uh, fucking Jake Tapper tell you that the Afghanistan war is wrong. Like, not that that's going to happen. But you don't have to have that. You don't have to have that. Like, you know it's fucked off. You just don't care because you're too busy watching TMZ. And also, to be fair, because you're trying to figure out how you're going to feed your family because you're going to try to figure out what you're going to do when they put these fucking mandates in place saying if you don't take the jab, you don't got no job and all this kind of dumb shit, right? It's a lot there, man. And I, uh, it's just it's sad to me that the, 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 the U.S. population is the least informed population in the world. And people overseas are looking to us as leaders and they hope that we rise up and stop our government from doing the evil things that we do. Because when you hear people say that this other country hates our country, they don't hate our country. They don't hate our people. They hate our government, our em the empire, right? The empire, the evil shit that they're doing. So we hold some responsibility for that. So if you want to know what Afghanistan was like, it sucked, right? If you want to know um, who was wrong, we all are. Right. If you want to know um, uh, how, why was the how, how is that we allowed the Afghanistan um, government to be so corrupt? It's because our government's corrupt and they were taking part in the corruption. That's just the easy. That's just the quick, the quick of it. All right. So hey, that's it. Uh, comment down below. Disagree. Agree. Like it. Dislike it. Share it. Don't share it. I'm just having a conversation. All right. Uh, have it amongst yourselves. Take it easy. Deuces.